Beth, the concept of self-awareness is perhaps one of the most unique human aspects that we can imagine about ourselves. Uh, in un trying to understand self-awareness, the awareness of myself being aware, memory is obviously very critical to it. But looking at memory and the work that you've done on false memory, how can false memory help us to understand what the, the deep structure of self-awareness is all about? Well, one contribution of the false memory perspective is to think about the fact that false memories can develop spontaneously in people. Mm -hmm. uh, people suggest things to themselves or they draw inferences about themselves and those inferences can then become their memories. This happens spontaneously, um, I would argue, in the absence of any external suggestion, we just do it to ourselves. And so you see experiments, experimental findings that, that show that we, we remember that we got better grades than we really did in school. We remember that we voted in elections that we didn't really vote in. Uh, we remember that our kids walked and talked at an earlier age than they really did. Um, we remember that we contributed more to a joint project than, than we really did. If you take two people who worked on a joint project, and it might be a work project, it might be a married couple and working on their housework together, and you ask what percent of the total effort is your contribution, it might add up to 150%. <laughs> people remember that they did more than they did. So what does this do for us? This allows us to feel a little bit better about ourselves. Um, it deprives us of, of accurate self-awareness, <laughs> but it, it may have a benefit. The benefit being we can feel better about ourselves. Does that, um, what does that say about human beings in, in general? Does that make us, uh, is it have to do with the competition that we have with each other? Is, is, is it a competitive factor or, or is it even just an isolated personal factor? Are we uh, competing with ourselves or competing with others? No, there are a lot of reasons why, take one example, that you might remember that you contributed more to a joint effort. You're, you're paying more attention to your own contribution. Right, uh, right. You're, you're focusing on it more. And so you use that greater attention, greater focus to pr provide your estimate of how much did I do. Um, so, it's not so it's not something that I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately trying to promote myself. It's what I really genuinely feel. I think people who overinflate their their contribution to a joint effort do do really believe in in what they're saying. Uh, and I think this is an important thing for people to know about because you can you can use this finding to f make yourself be less resentful or hmm. of other people who d don't seem to you to be f pulling their weight. Hmm. So if 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 you say, "Gee, I think I'm doing seventy percent of the work around the house," uh, and your partner's probably saying, "I think I'm doing seventy percent," well, maybe you want to make a little bit of adjustment in your estimate so that you can feel less frustrated about the, the joint contributions. Let's look at this self-awareness uh, as, um, as a prime attribute of human beings. Uh, what are the constituents of that and how does the feeling better about yourself um, uh, uh, go to build that self-awareness? Uh, what are the components of that self-awareness that, that this would therefore be an important factor in? Uh, well, when we, when I think people probably like to think of themselves in a positive way. I mean, assuming people are not depressed, clinically depressed, many people want to think of themselves in a positive way. And uh, sometimes it, it involves trying to remember good things ab about you and, and focus on those good things. But at other times, it may be that you exaggerate or distort um, aspects of the truth in order to achieve that that goal. I mean, one can make up an evolutionary uh, psychology scenario that those people have 
greater sense of self-awareness and self-importance will be the ones more likely to pass on their genes and be more popular with the opposite sex. I mean, one can go through that type of analysis. You think that's justified? Oh, I'm not sure because I, I think of uh, even very intelligent, accomplished people can have moments in which they lack self-awareness, I, I, I guess is a way to put it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of an example right now of Hillary Clinton, uh, our Secretary of State. And when she was running for the Democratic nomination for the presidency, she told personal stories about how she had landed in Bosnia under sniper fire and how they had to, you know, escape from the sniper fire and run to the uh, run to their base. And it turned out she obviously wasn't alone on the trip she had taken 12 years earlier to Bosnia. Other people were there. Some of them were taking pictures. And there are pictures of this very, very peaceful greeting ceremony where children were bringing her flowers and so on. So how is it that this highly intelligent, educated woman could remember such a, an event that obviously didn't happen. And obviously she didn't uh, know she was not telling the truth because she, she wouldn't have exposed herself to such ridicule. And that's why I believe that some of the people responding to the, this set of uh, events called her a liar. Yeah. Uh, I don't think she's a liar. And yeah. of course her ultimate explanation was, I made a mistake, I had a different memory, I made a mistake, that happens, that proves I'm human, she yeah. said, which for some people is a revelation. <laughs> yeah. So she was funny about it, but yeah. but where was her self-awareness when she was repeatedly telling the story about Bosnia? Mm -hmm. And, and could, could have that have been, how, how did that, how might that false memory have been implanted in her? Well, I've got a couple of speculations. I'd have to get a chance to meet her maybe <laughs> to, uh, one is that, she might have been prepared for the eventuality mm -hmm. of a sniper f attack mm -hmm. or sniper she, fire. She might have been hoping for it. Well, she, <laughs> she might have been prepared for it. She, so she might have been taken through, what if this happens, visualize uh, uh, it, uh, uh, here's uh, what we're going to do, uh, so that if it happened, she was prepared to okay. follow those instructions. Then years later, she then confuses the preparation with the actuality. Mm -hmm. She could have... Because the same mental picture that you'd have in the preparation is encoded in your brain and memory circuits or patterns, however it works. And, 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 and in the actuality, it would have been something similar. So in, in looking back at it, it's hard to tell the difference. Right. So she, would have, she could have had a, this visualization through the preparation. And then that's, she remembers that and misattributes it to mm. an actual experience rather than just to the imagined preparation. Now that's just a speculation at this point. She could have read about somebody else's experience mm. landing in Bosnia under sniper fire uh, and had that sense of familiarity about it and attributed it to her own experience. Mm. Mm. Because we do pick up stories from other people and and get when, confused. And, and when she told it, it and if it were true, it would have been self-enhancing. It would have because it would have shown that she uh, could face a crisis situation, <laughs> deal with it, come out right. of it alive and, right. and kicking. Right. Uh, and it would have been a self-enhancing kind of, of story to tell. It would have made her interesting. Well, she is pretty interesting. Right. She didn't need to to make something up to make herself more interesting, but there are lots of things uh, going on uh, here. Of, of the majority of, um, of spontaneous uh, false memories that, that occur in people, are virtually all of them have a self-enhancing kind of relationship or, or are there other things? Uh, well, not, it depends on what you, I mean, sometimes people have false memories for things that are pretty negative and, and allow them to be victims and allow them to get benefits like sympathy, empathy, yeah. attention, or other benefits. So, in, in the, with their psychology, that's a, that's a that's an enhancement. Even even if it's a, to be treated as a victim or need sympathy or whatever else, it's a it's for whatever your personality is. It's a self enhancing. In in that sense, it it it, it gets you a it gets you a benefit. Yeah, it gets you a benefit. It gets you a benefit. Yeah. 
And so how, how do you reflect upon the, the concept of self-awareness, knowing all of these subterranean activities that go on? Well, I, it, knowing the science of self-enhancing memory distortion, uh, knowing the science behind uh, wanting to remember things that are going to bring you a benefit, I think I have become a little bit more tolerant with the mistakes that I see and hear people making. Um, because those mistakes, a lot of people want to call you a liar. And these aren't deliberate lies. These are, these are honest liars, mm -hmm. if you want to call them that. Mm -hmm.